the story I'm going to tell, Kim was saying you got to tell a story of the South or something. The story I'm going to tell, uh, when we were growing up, my aunts and family and uncles and everybody would sit around like this, and everybody would have a story to tell. And this is one I remember specifically, I thought it was hilarious. My grandmother, my father's mother and family, with my father and his two sisters, lived way out in the country. And uh, it was during the Depression. And my grandmother's sister, we called her Aunt Bill, lived in Birmingham, which was the big city. And once or twice a year, Aunt Bill would come from the big city out to see her sister, my grandmother, uh, way out in the middle of the country. And they'd go pick her up at the train station. And they really loved Aunt Bill coming because she would keep them informed of what was happening in the big city as they lived way out in the sticks. And my grandmother would always when my aunt uh, Bill got to the house would always go through Aunt Bill's suitcases because inevitably Aunt Bill brought some kind of gift, some kind of new gadget from the city. And uh, my grandmother loved chewing gum. As a matter of fact, my grandmother also dipped snuff. <laughs> and uh, she would send us out into the woods to get her sweet gum branches or her t teeth brush or toothbrushes as you call them. You'd cut this little branch and she'd splice it up and she'd move her snuff around. She could sit for hours with snuff in her mouth and she'd just move it around with a little uh, branch off of a, a twig off of a, a tree. But anyway, my grandmother loved chewing gum. So one time when Aunt Bill came, she, Aunt Bill was busy visiting with everybody. My grandmother disappeared into the back room with Aunt Bill's suitcases and my grandmother came out with a jaw full of chewing gum. And, and she was just proud of herself and said, okay, Bill, okay, I caught you. You were going to try to sneak this gum in and not give me any. You knew how much I love gum. You hid that gum in your suitcase. And my Aunt Bill went, oh, burn us, burn us, spit it out. That's not gum. That's not gum. And my, my grandmother's going, oh, what do you think? This is delicious gum. It's spearmint gum. I love it. And I ate the whole box. And she said, no, burn us, spit it out. You don't know what you're doing. And it was phenomenal. What's that? Athena Mint was a chewing gum laxative. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so it was like x lax uh, Instead of being chocolate, it was gum. Uh, uh, so she no. ate the whole box. Now, what makes it worse is they didn't have indoor plumbing. Uh, so it was like 50 yards out of the house. And my aunt was saying, Bernice, you got to spit it out now. You can't keep that in your mouth. It's, it's going to make you sick. And my grandmother wouldn't listen to him, just strutting around the house, chewing the gum, chewed it all, and kept it in for the whole time. And my aunt would just say, oh, well, you know, you're going to have to take it. Well, they, they, the, as my aunt was telling the story, she said they went to bed that night, and as soon as the lights got out, and the whole, they, there were no carpets or anything, and it was just a wooden floor, and it was built up on piers, they call it, so that you could hear everything. So, so as soon as the lights went out, they heard this. All, just, all of a sudden, my grandmother's feet hit the floor like this, and <laughs> just, just, the uh, screen door flies open, comes slamming shut, and they hear her running down. She comes plodding back up, comes up the steps, opens the screen door, and as soon as she lays in the bed and they hear the bed creak, all of a sudden her feet go, Bang! <laughs> and she would run out and slam the door, and about, it was about hours later, you know, every time she'd be coming back, it's like this. And oh, she's just trying to run out like this, and then about that for the fourth time, my grandmother was going, "Bill, Bill, you got to help me! I'm dying! <laughs> I can't do it anymore! I'm dying!" Said, and then the, the last thing of the story is the next day, they started as they would go down to the outhouse, they just started noticing that about every 20 feet, <laughs> so it just started getting closer and closer. <laughs> She couldn't make it any longer. So uh, yeah, yeah. that is a, that is a true, a true redneck story. <laughs>